Alright, me, everybody, it's Michelle Marie telling North American Snow Queen, and of course, today we're going to talk about uh, everyday things. Uh, the weather is definitely on the list today, as there has been uh, several scientists who are very familiar with climatology have pointed out that with our sun calming down as the amount of solar uh, infrared coming from our sun has reduced uh, for the most part and is causing the beginning of a reverse climate change to what the IPCC keeps talking about. It turns out that we are seeing the beginning of global cooling. Screw global warming because it's not warming up at all. Um, in fact, it's going to be getting colder. And it's uh, even by the 29th of this month. Um, actually, not even that far in. We're going to start seeing temperatures on the 29th begin to get much colder than even we would expect for the beginning of November again. And that's because of the climate changes around us. The amount of snow that they had in upstate New York is unprecedented. Six feet of snow fell in Buffalo, I believe, in a period of eight, eight hours. Okay, eight hours of snow. Uh, it's lake effect snow, and that means that um, there's a lot of precipitation. Some people, besides the Interstate 90, were snarled in, but there also were people who couldn't even get out of their houses easily. Um, they're still working very diligently to clean up the um, areas of upstate New York, which had a tremendous amount of snowfall. Looking at the uh, extent of how far the system had went here in Connecticut, we were probably about 30 to 40 miles away from have been a participant, even in a residual amount of lake effect snow. And that's because of the polar vertex that came down and began the process of making a difference. Um, I had Dory here earlier, so we have the two microphones on the table here. And of course, her video and my video is processing. I gotta work on a few more pieces of it. Um, um, Final Cut Express is no express, uh, especially when you're getting into more advanced things like animated backgrounds and overlays and titling and, and um, special effects. It runs a lot slower. Speaking of running slower, it turns out that the uh, animated studios are having a hard time keeping up with the new desire for 4K video, even for cinematic productions, with the existing amount of servers they have, because the graphics and the animations take so much work to do for the computer to render a full scene in the type of 4K resolution, which is actually two and a half times higher, uh, I believe, than even standard um, 1080p. Now, when I saw Frozen at the cinema, I saw a lot of wonderful work, but so many animations in Frozen took days to do, especially the making of Elsa's Crystal Chandelier. Clearly, to make that same film in 4K would have taken a lot longer to do that. So clearly the animation studios are really not quite ready to do 4K films in a timely manner, but that doesn't mean that they won't get it done. And just like me, just trying to get a standard definition video up using a PowerMax G5 running at 2 GHz is taking me a while to go.
In the earlier video, I mentioned I forgot to give you my waste report, and I will give it here. Even though, I really must be honest, I haven't really seen any significant loss since the last one. My um, people like to talk about something called BMI. We're talking about the new anti-Barbie doll called, made by uh, a company called Lamilla. The Lamilla doll. Um, we are going to, I'm going to be honest when I say it, we have segments of the article from RT on that with Dory and um, showing some snapshots from his prototype. And in fact, his prototype looks very much like your average everyday lady in her 20s. Um, would they actually be able to give her as a blonde look? Well, right now the doll has brown hair, not blonde hair. Which is typically a very common color. Even platinum blonde is extremely rare. And regular blonde is also rare. It turns out that brown haired people are much more common than even, even redheads are not even this common. Black hairs are not as common, but brown hair is the most common. Um, I got a, uh, a video complainer on an earlier video. I did not uh, take the guy's name. It was about my video on immigration and the uh, way that immigrants are getting unlimited free medical care, housing, and things like that. And this came out around September. Let me just answer what this guy said. He said, quote, Look at yourself. You look like a piece of shit. Exactly my point, my friend. <laughs> it's because I have not been able to get the care I need to fix the problems in my life. And the CanCI report is so far so good. Except I'm having a harder time coordinating getting the drops to go in my left and my right eye uh, using my right hand. Why aren't you using your left hand? It's like you keep using your right when you can't even hit the broad side of a bar. <laughs> Good point, Lou. <laughs> Probably because I figured I was... Wait a minute, you control my left hand, right hand. And yeah, I'm not that good at it. Okay, so we'll have to work on it. Um... I also mentioned a personality profile, which I did not get a chance to share with you. And I'm going to share some of that. And this uh, was a personality profile that me and Lumi took uh, last year. Of all the interviews and things that we were trying to gather information together to see how we compared and contrast it in our video presentation. I'm not going to go through every single section of this response because there's quite a few paragraphs. I'm going to read paragraphs one and two for each personality type. First of all, let's start with my personality type. According to this definitions chart, INFJ personality the INFJ personality type is believed to be very rare, less than 1% of the population, and has an unusual set of traits. Even though their presence can be described as very quiet, INFJ personalities usually have many strong opinions, especially when it comes to issues that they consider really important in life. If an INFJ is fighting for something, this is because they believe in the idea itself not because of some selfish reason. I and FJ personalities are drawn towards helping those in need. They may rush to the place of a major disaster, participate in rescue efforts, do charity work, etc. I and FJs are, see this as their duty and their purpose in life. People with this personality type Firmly believe that nothing else would help the world as much as getting rid of all the tyrants. Karma and similar concepts are very attractive to INFJs. 
Okay, and that's my personality type. Now, clearly we know the old expression opposites attract, and this certainly implies when you compare Lumi's personality. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I'll read it. Okay. ESFJ personality. If someone tried to define an ESFJ personality trait in three words, it would be probably be practical, altruistic, and sociable. Forming around 12% of the population, ESFJs want to be of service to others and take their commitments very seriously. They do not really worry about what the role they're in as long as they get a chance to socialize with other people and feel valued and appreciated. Okay, next paragraph. I know, I'm getting to it. ESFJs are great team players, always able to sense tensions and incompatibilities. They are very, very traditional, doing their best to support and defend authority and law. People with this personality type also tend to be very devoted, whether they are playing the role of a party, host, or social worker. It is quite easy to recognize ESFJs as social events. They'll find enough time to chat with everybody. And the types for... You want to go for your list of examples? Yes. Um... Let's see. So he's okay. The INFJ personality types include former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, Goth, Mel Gibson, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Nicole Kidman, and James Wilson from House MD. Right, and of course my types, your personality types. Or people that share your personality is a lot more of us. A lot more of you. Right. Um, you want to read it? Sure. Sure, famous ESFJs. William McKinley, former U.S. President. Bill Clinton, former U.S. President. Harry S. Truman, former U.S. President. Sally Struthers. Mary Tyler Moore. Sarah Palin, U.S. Vice Presidential Candidate and former Governor of Alaska. Dixie Carter. Sally Field, Danny Glover, Nancy Kerrigan, Dean Winchester from Supernatural, and Monica from Friends. And it's kind of interesting that we actually do kind of, um, uh, are we, we are kind of opposites, but we kind of work together. Yeah. And we also find that working together as a team allows us to do things um such as inspire and to educate and to inform you, the watcher. And, um, and you know, and I think it's we need to keep reminding people that we are here not only as from, you know, Yule to Ostara as the North American Snow Queen and active role, but we also are just as much American citizens as you, and we are here to speak out on things that are wrong and speak up for things that are right. In other words, we will defend the things that are correct and justified, and we will very much be angry at the things that are wrong and unjustified. It's just the way we are. It doesn't mean that we're bad people. It just means we are ourselves. Okay, I admit I'm not skinny. And like I said, I look a lot like Candy Crawley. Okay? And especially you know, a few years ago when Candy Crawley had a much bigger issue with her weight, she definitely had a stocky build like I do. And that doesn't mean that she was any less of a quality commentator in CNN. She really did work hard in her media, and, and I just as I do in mine. Technically, for all intents and purposes, 
is I may not be at the same caliber of quality of news gathering and in research as the big names in commentary and news reporting, but I am just as much dedicated to provide you, that's right, you, you out there, with the information that is accurate and timely as best I can. But sometimes, the reasons that are outside of my control, trying to get the news out in a timely manner is not always possible. I don't have some of the technology that the big newscasters have. I don't even have the technology Alex Jones has. I just got a small little studio with one camera, a desk, two microphones, and uh, three light sources, each consuming 300 watts apiece, 900 watts total, and a computer that only runs at 2 gigahertz with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Power Mac G5. And it's not the high-end one either. But it does got a dual core, so it makes a difference. At least, it allows more work to get done by sharing the load between two processors. But, no matter how you look at it, you slice it up the same way, it still comes up peanuts. It's not much of a technology, but it's what we got. And we use what we have because that's what we got. Make do with what you got. As the old famous saying, which was pointed out by Kim Stanley Robinson and Red Mars, Shikita Gainai, you do with what you have. And of course, we could still use your help to help us to improve our performance and our quality of work and to get you the information in a more timely manner. I saw some new technology on both Fox, um, let's see, with, uh, oh, Dang, what is his name there? And the Weather Channel um, that shows in using giant touchscreen computers to do interactive video processing and, and showing on-the-fly video clips. I am green with envy. I would love to have one of those big tablet screen desktop thingies right on the back wall here. Think of how much easier it would be to show you something. I would just be like up there, as you see on CNN or on Fox News. I think, oh, it's, it's Shepard Smith. Thank you. Um, Shepard Smith Studio and also with uh, Weather Channel. Being able to draw and doodle on the screen, showing you things as we go. Right now, I'm lucky enough if I could do what like Glenn Beck used to do using blackboards. Nothing wrong with that. Except that I don't have one yet. I will get one. We'll get one. Blackboard is, should be easy enough to find. Although I might still want to get the overhead projector because it will allow us to do the same job using something that's a lot less expensive than a fancy, highly sophisticated studio. Again, shaki to gainai. You do with what you got. You don't have no money to buy anything fancy, so you have to use what you have. And pray it lasts. And you know what? I run this out of a shoestring budget. I don't even have sponsors. And I don't even make money. Even when I was running AdSense. You notice I took the AdSense off again. I wasn't making a dime off the videos. Patreon and GoFundMe is not making money either. Even though I know I have people that do like my work. I never asked for major donations from anybody. I don't even like to. I don't even like to sit there and keep plugging the donation business. But I know you hate AdSense and you hate commercials just as much as I do. So let's work together on that, shall we? Let's continue to add new video content. Let's continue to improve our performance. Let's let's hope. Let's aim for the day when we'll have a studio where we'll be able to have a round table. Now, how about a square table? A square table discussion. Yeah, we could do that. You did that with Dory. I mean, yeah, but we only have one camera. Yeah, I know, and it's it's in the other room, and it's it's there's only like a narrow alleyway for the camera to come in and look at the view. But maybe the day will come when we'll be able to get a video switcher and be able to have multiple camera angles. Then we need a control person at the control center to switch between the cameras. I can't be at two places at once. No, you can't. 
And, um, and that's the truth. And I mean, I also want to remind you that no matter how it comes out, no matter how the weather is going to go, I'm going to be there standing behind you. I'm talking about people who try to do the right thing, who try to, to pull their own weight, make an effort to, to get ahead by their own means. Creativity, I encourage it. Spontaneity, I encourage that too. But the most important thing I encourage is that you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in who you are. And you have to believe in what you can do. There's no one out there in the world that is more important than being able to provide for your own means. The world is a very complicated place. And there's a lot of things in the world that are always going to be changing. But you got to be ready to provide for your own means. Because one day the entitlement programs are going to go poof. The U.S. economy is so much in debt that if China ever called in that debt, this country would be totally ill-prepared to even pay a portion of that debt. And it doesn't help when congressmen, senators out in the United States Congress and the United Senate act as if it doesn't matter if they keep right asking for more money for the U.S. deficit. It does matter, and it matters a lot. I can tell you, I bet their home families, they watch their budget like a hawk. And they probably have a very tight line with a lot of spending. And yet this country constantly decides to keep asking for more money for programs they cannot afford. In the case of President Obama and his attitude, I'm not impressed by what you're doing. I don't know why you feel that the U.S. Congress and U.S. Senate should not be allowed to speak up. But however, I'll be honest, maybe the U.S. Congress and U.S. Senate, until the end of the lame deck session in January, when the Republicans finally are fully seated at the table, we might get something done. Mr. Boehner, I'm not going to even encourage you to suggest a government shutdown at all. We saw what happened last time, and it hurt your party. I'm a Republican too, but I'm a moderate Republican. I try to look at things from both sides of the coin, and I do my best to make sure that I understand both sides of the equation before I put my foot in my mouth. And I put my foot in my mouth internationally, globally, and actually galactically. It's thanks to the internet, the way the internet goes out in space, Somebody in Alpha Centauri 200 years from now is going to watch my videos and they're going to probably say, gee, what a nut job. Did she think that they were going to listen to her? Well, it would be nice if they would listen sometime. But you know, just like Vincent Van Gogh, just like um, was saying about him uh, by pa Tom, Don McLean, they did not listen they did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen now. The truth is, is that was after he died. But when he was alive, Vincent Vago was very badly misunderstood and had a hard time trying to get people to understand his artwork. And yet, he still painted. He still painted the way he saw the world around him. Today, I mean, back then, he probably couldn't even sell one of his paintings. Today, a Van Gogh is worth a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. It's sad that you have to die before your artwork gets appreciated. Well, I'm not going to die in the near future unless, and this is, I'm going to bring this up right now because it is a possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, my family, we have a cancer problem. Um... Cancer rents in my family, and a lot of my family members have suffered from all kinds of cancer, from skin cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, breast cancer. And in a couple of days, more than likely, 
I will be having a mammogram. And I hope to God that I'm not one of the one out of eight women that happens to be the unlucky one. But you know what? That's the way the chip falls. You can't help that. Except to just gnash your teeth and keep going, no matter what. And if for some reason something bad does happen, and I have to go through chemo and radiation, and I lose all my hair, and I'm sick as a dog, I am still going to push ahead and forge ahead and try to keep doing the videos that I do. Because I'm dedicated to the open forum. I'm dedicated to speaking up for what's right. Incidentally, speaking up for what's right, I tried to fight very hard to get cleared up with the song from the Hurricane Sandy video, which is being misled or miswritten associated with another artist from a song I never heard of, created by UMG. Likewise, the um, um, the Slippin' Blues song, which we Shuffle in Blues that we were using at the end of our video captions, was also being misidentified by my the content ID. I filed, I filed an appeal, pointing out that I don't feel it's right that the wrong artist gets attribution for a song that they did not create. I am fighting for the honest artist, the real artist, to get the credit they deserve. So whoever wrote Shuffling Blues, I want to thank you very much that you made it available as a demo song on Apple iTunes 9. I mean, iMovie 9. And I want you to know that I appreciate your effort and your creativity. Just as I also created the work of Creedence Clearwater Revival for the song called Bad Moon Rising. I appreciate everything that you guys are singing or performing. I don't like to steal music from anybody. I truly believe it is essential to give credit where credit is due. Even if it's not good credit, I'll give credit to where credit is due. I contacted YouTube and I filed an appeal. And I'm going to keep fighting for you. And I'm asking you, the content creators who rightfully wrote the songs that are at the end of my videos, to please speak up. And stand up and realize that I want you to get justified credit. And if you would please tell me where to send a royalty payment and how much, I will personally arrange to put a check in the mail for you. I believe in giving credit to the right artist. And I believe it is the right thing to do. After all, we have to understand content ID only uses a few pieces of a song to determine content. And unfortunately, it sometimes results in a lot of false positives. Well, unfortunately, group UMG is still trying to tell me that they refuse to give proper acknowledgement for Bad Moon Rising by Clayton's Clearwater Revival. In fact, YouTube even threatened me and said, if you exclude this appeal... And it is found that it is in correct that it is still UMG still believes that it is their song. They have the legal right to file a strike against you and force the removal of the Hurricane Sandy video. That Hurricane Sandy video was an essential video at the time. It made sense. It was about with all the things that was going on with this major hurricane affecting the East Coast. Of course, now Hurricane Sandy's over. And so maybe it might make sense to take this, the video off the YouTube. I'd rather not because it's a historical document. And I'd really rather leave it there. But I will not stand behind someone who did not create something that I'm using trying to take credit away from the really legitimate person. And as I said, for whoever wrote Shuffle and Blues and Bad News, Bad Moon Rising, if you'll contact me, let's discuss this. I want you to get your proper respect in what is due to you. That song 
made a big impression on that Hurricane Sandy video. It really filled in the severity of Hurricane Sandy. And that hurricane came, that video was created before the Hurricane Sandy hit land. And when it was created, I said it was bad. And the bad moon rising was perfect because it did take lives. And we did have nasty weather. So why are we allowing some artists I do not know to take credit for your work? Content providers, if you really feel that this content ID is not rightly, fairly monitored and regulated, speak up. Stand your ground. It's okay. I'm on your side. I believe in the copyright system. And I do not believe in stealing any pieces of work. I will respectfully give any content copyright holders any information I have on the works. I will do whatever I can to work with you. Because we need to make sure that the right people get the respect they deserved. That's exactly what Vincent Van Gogh would have wanted, even for his paintings. He was writing about the average everyday person in his time. He was speaking out in art about what he saw around him. That takes a lot of guts to do. Sadly enough, we did not appreciate his work until after he had passed away. But it doesn't have to be like that. So let's keep let's let's keep this in mind. Something that a lot of free speakers, including Nelson Mandela, would have said. We have to fight for what is right, and we have to work to make sure that people are treated with just respect and kindness, and the truth must stand. I might be a North American Snow Queen. I have a job to do, but that does not mean I am an asshole. I work hard to provide as much information as I can. I'll be honest, I'm not the most powerful sorceress in the world. Honest, my, my ability is pretty limited. It's not even that good. And incidentally, my sorcery is nothing like you see on TV. Okay, it's just, it's, it works with science to get things done. It uses the scientific principles and scientific process to observe quantify, clarify, and justify the results. And based on the information I have, I can make a decision if I should inter intervene or leave it alone. We knew what was going on with the cold fronts from Canada. But we have warned you, and I have continued to warn you, as have many other scientists, that this is coming. Yes, there's another bad moon rising. It's called climate change, minus climate change. Cold climate change. Forget wearing shorts in July or in January here in Connecticut. That ain't gonna happen. You might need to wear long underwear in June in a few years. So you need to be prepared for that reality. Well, for the time being, I have another video to edit, and I got a lot of work to do. So by the time this video gets out to you, it probably will not be until Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. And I'm going to do everything I can to get this out to you in a timely manner. And please do not forget to like or dislike the video. And if you've got any personal complaints, comments, kudos, whatever, please use them in the comment section below and I will gladly talk to you. If I don't respond to you, that doesn't mean I don't like you. It just means that maybe I'm thinking about what you said and trying to real try to come up with an answer. As far as a person who said they look like a piece of shit. Yeah, well, when you're 46 years old and you can't get the proper medical care you need, you can't help what you look like. We just got to keep doing the best we can. That's all we can do. That takes a lot of dedication and guts to get out there on camera, even when I look like crap, to tell you what I need to tell you. And 
if you are one of the contact providers that I need to talk to, i.e. the writer of the song Bad Moon Rising and the creator of Shuffling Blues, if you would please contact me via personal email and we can discuss what we can do to give you proper credit. And you can email me at b as in boy, I-C-H-E-L-A-3 at gmail.com. Please say in the con- or say in the subject line um, the name of the song. And, of course, in, your, in the letter, please specify what you feel you want for, for, for exchange. Because I feel that you should be receiving proper recognition at the very least. For your work. And also you need to contact contact the content ID people and have them go through and check their sources for any other song that may have been misidentified as somebody else's work. You contact me and I will give you a copy of the information from YouTube regarding what they have told me and who they say it is. So that you can get in contact with them and put it right. Uh, for guys, I'll talk to you soon. Okay? I, I'll see you. Hopefully, you'll keep warm. By the way, as I said, the 29th of November, things are going to be getting cold again. And if I don't get this video up before, or don't get another video up before Thanksgiving, which is next week, I want to thank you for watching the videos. And remember that in next year, here in Connecticut, in Winstead, I am planning to run for selectmen. And then I plan to work with the Republican Town Committee in March to get my name on the ballot in the town of Winstead. And as a selectman, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't necessarily support the rich, and I do not necessarily support the poor. I believe... In a moderate position. I try to look at the things from both sides. So as a selectman of Winstead. I will continue. To work to help. Create new jobs. And new opportunities. For all people. To enjoy the privilege. Of finding a job. That they enjoy. Maybe even possibly being able to expand the career path. That's just me. For now. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye everybody.